Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we have a comment that came in and it's relative to the daily that was titled Getting to the T Finish Position. And this came from in from Rocky and Rocky says, starts out saying, Don, very disappointing in your answer. He asked a simple question, where do you finish? He did not ask how to stand or anything else. Please only where do you finish? We all know that if your feet are too wide, it will be very difficult to, sw to swing. Plus, if you are shoulder wide and you take the swing back, where do you finish? Thanks. Okay. Normally, when I answer questions, what's, and, and if it has to do with anything with a, with a golf swing, and especially hitting the ball, I always have to bring in the concept of alignment. All right? Not too many questions ever come in and says, hey, give me a tutorial on alignment, please. I need to know what's, how to do it. No, but I have to bring it up, just like I have to bring up a lot of things of what's another thing that causes balls being hit out to the right or left or whatever besides alignment. Well, you could have, you could have, you could be sucking the club inside and swinging out. How many people still think about hitting the inside of the golf ball, swinging out? I mean, that's still out there. The big issue, the big part, the thing is, is that in most cases, because the setup determines the motion, I have to discuss setup as to if a man's having a problem getting to his finish, I got to go and look at all the things previous to getting to the finish that could be causing it. One of them is definitely starts out with setup. And, and, and two would be alignment. And three would be how he starts swinging the golf club. And if he's got too much movement in his body, like lifting his feet up and, and, and kicking his knee in too much, and, and or he starts and snaps his left foot, the, he strains up, he turns his hips too much and straightens up his left knee. All of those things are affecting his finish. If I just show him what the tee finish is, but I don't give him the concepts of what could be causing that problem, and if I recall that letter, that, that question came about the person was having trouble getting to the finish. So I have to address the things that could do it. And, yeah, and then I can also say not all surgites really know all these things because we, we constantly have an influx of new surgites coming in, all right? And, and some people, and I get letters all the time saying, and I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard me read them, where people say, this is great because you keep reinforcing, when you go through these things, you're reinforcing the setup and the things about the swing that can cause problems. And that's why they say they like it. So realistically, if I just answered every question just point blank for that, you know, how do I stop my takeaway? Boom, that's it, forget everything else. Well, again, if I don't have the right setup and the ball's in the wrong position and, and my body's in the wrong position, I can't have the right set, I can't have the right takeaway. All right, so if the person's writing in and he's having a problem with the takeaway, it's imperative or at least logical that I have to tell him some of the things that could be causing his problem so that he can look at those things because if I just tell him to move but don't give him the setup, he's, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to get the move because the setup determines the motion. So that's why, that's why I cover a lot of these things. So, yes, he only asked me about the finish, but you got to have all the things preceding it to get to the proper finish, okay? So, I'd just like to use the rest of this time to just talk about, uh, about getting to the T finish. And, and again, the T finish has to be in dynamic balance. So, assuming that, that all the other things are there, we're just going to talk about the T finish today. The T finish is... It's called a T because when I swing through and stand up, we want to get relatively erect. We want to stand up straight again, all right? Shoulders horizontal on the ground, spine vertical to the ground. From this view, you'll see it. The arms will come up into the shoulder, recoil and relax at the target, okay? From the, from the side view, when I, from a back view, when I finish, you can see that when I recoil and relax, I'm in the T and I'm down. From, from this view, you will see that, that my shoulders have reached my hips and shoulders are basically in line over my left leg. The right foot is up. My rear foot is up. The knee comes almost right to here to the, to, the, to the left knee. If it goes by, that means your stance is too. If this knee gets even with this knee, if your back knee gets even with your front knee or goes past it, your stance is too, is too narrow and or you're sliding your foot. And if, you're, if you get over here and there's space between the knee here, it should at least reach to like almost the, the dead center of the kneecap there. If there's too much space back there, then your stance is too wide, or you're, you're reaching a point where you're falling backwards. All right? So the T finish has to be teed because of why. A, it's a balanced position. When you finish in a T position and you recall and relax, your eyes are horizontal to the ground. Now, balance is, is best determined and best maintained when eyes are horizontal to the ground. Also, the way your brain 
can analyze what your body just did in movement is to is when your eyes are horizontal to the ground. If you stand up here and finish like this, like a lot of years ago, they used to say, finish with your head on a pillow. Well, when you finish like this, your arms are up too high, you got this curvature here, there's a lot of pressure when your arms come up and you swung through, and, you, and in many cases, if you keep your head like this, you're gonna have too much turn in your spine, you're gonna have too much curvature in your body, what they used to call that seat position, and, and, and you're not in dynamic balance because dynamic balance is gonna be more easily achieved based with the balance mechanism having to be horizontal, eyes horizontal to the ground, okay? So that's why we want to get to that position because A, it's less stressful, it's the only, it's the true balance position because of your eyes needing to be horizontal to the ground to see, maintain balance and for your brain to, to properly analyze everything that just happened in your swing to produce that hit you just had. So that's why it's so important to stand up and, 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 and get into that nice relaxed position, especially when you recall and relax to here. You've gotten back nice and straight. There's no more stresses, strains on, and, and pressure points on the body to really hurt it. And you're right here and you can watch your shot as long as you want to watch it till where it falls down and, and you walk out when you want to walk out. All right, if you, can't, if you can't get to a finish and stand here and then walk out when you want to walk out, you're not getting to a, a, a T balanced finish. The finish should stand there and you should walk away when you want to walk away. But we see so many people that are shot in there, they're falling backwards or, or, or they're, they're you know, falling out of the shot too soon. Work on your teeth finish. Too much turn, too much movement. All of those things can, can cause that problem. So the teeth finish is critical when you're hitting normal shots. Naturally, if you're, ever, if you're hitting in, in uh, downhill, side hill lies, like I'm actually a little bit downhill here. I think you can see by, if you can notice that, that this is a slope, gently slope down to there. So I, I work on it. So whenever I got, ever I got a, 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 a side hill, downhill lie or whatever, I always stand beside the ball and I take practice swings there so I can feel where, how is this hill going to stop pushing me so I know and, and I figure that out so that I can make sure if anything I'm going to stay put till impact. Right? If I was swinging at the camera this way, which now is downhill, I'm going to take a practice swing so I can see that, see it wants to push me forward. Conversely, if I'm swinging the other way uphill, and I, I'm going to swing to feel where is this going to stop pushing me backwards. So the whole key is, is once I feel that sense of where I'm at there, and I, and I, and I know what I got to, if I got to, on this one I got to make sure I stay more level on my feet here, and I can't let myself get pulled forward. This one I got to make sure I got to at least get the impact and, and, and where I'm staying put and know that that, that in this case I might not get to my tee finish because swinging up and the club coming back is, with the slope is going to pull me back that way just as that it'll pull me this way the other way. So that's why sometimes you just can't ever get to the tee finish but you got to use the sense of trying to get there and knowing that you still have to make sure no matter what you have to stay put to limp back whichever way, whichever way you're going to uh, that, that you know gravity is going to and the momentum is going to start to pull you off the ball where you can't get to the tee finish. But I'm always swinging, even though I know this way or, or, that, or that way that I, um, I can't get to the perfect tee finish, I am going to try to swing up to there and then I'll let, I'll let, I'll let it fall back into where I'm going to at least stand here and get back to my eyes horizontal on the ground to see it, to see the flight in the air. But the key is staying put to finish, but I'm always trying to get to a tee finish, even when I know on certain downhills, uphill and side hill lies, I can't ever get there. I'm trying to swing there and be in stay and staying put to impact. Because right now, if I didn't really concentrate and stand staying flat on my feet and hit these balls, I'd be falling in a lot and probably hitting a lot of balls towards the heel and pulls to the and pulls into the screen. So I'm always slightly downhill here, but you notice I pretty much get to a pretty good tee finish. It's not enough that I can't get there, but I gotta make sure I really stay solid into my feet here, because if I don't and I and I just fall a little bit that way, there's no telling what I could hit and could probably get me a couple hosel rockets. All right, so in this case, hopefully we answered the T finish, but gave you an idea that, that I can't ever really truly answer questions without talking a little bit about setup and a little bit about some of the things that can cause the problem that the person's writing about and asking about. All right, so hopefully this clears things up and, uh, and so hopefully in most cases, you're gonna get a lot extra what you paid for than what you asked for, but I think it has to be said. And, and personally for me, I find that, that, that all these little extras, even when I give golf lessons and I tell everybody the right thing, I'm always reinforcing to myself the, the objects of good setup and the good things that happen in the golf swing. So that's what all of this is about. We, we covered a, a whole bunch of things that, that hopefully answer, we answer the topic, the question, but we put a lot of more things in there that's going to help getting to that question what they want that has to happen 
to be able to get to, to do those things that they want in the question. So hopefully I didn't get so confused up on this, but, uh, but the key is is that you got to talk about setup issues and talk about swing issues when somebody's asking about trying to clear up a problem of the swing or an issue they have with the swing. All right, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.